Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm your host, Mwikali. And welcome to the show if you're just tuning in because we're getting right into the serious stuff right now. And with me are two gentlemen from uh, Riara University. We have Professor Robert Gatero who's the Vice Chancellor of Riara University, Karibu Sana. And of course, we have Mr. Charles Kibui, the Head of Marketing Riara uh, at Riara University. Now, we're talking about digital education and you have an event that has a very, very interesting name. And this particular event is called the Digital Education Hackathon that is happening in the next month. I don't know what you think about when you hear the word hack. And now they're calling it a hackathon, so it's a marathon of hacking. That is what I think, but then again, kindly, uh, Tell us more about this. Why the hackathon? Before we even get to the details of it, because it's it's one of those words that actually start conversations. Mm. Yeah, because when you think about hacking, you think, oh, my money in the bank, <laughs> oh, my accounts on Google. <laughs> well, thank, thank you thank very you. much. Good yeah. morning, viewers. Mm. Uh, really, hackathon. Yes, it's a, it's a word that can seem scary or frightening, but really, hackathon is. It's, it's a cool way of uh, engaging each other to develop solutions that make sense to all of us. And uh, what better way than to engage the youth to determine the future of their education because we're in the digital era. So hackathon, yes, your money is safe in the bank. Don't Thank worry. We are not much. going to <laughs> attack your money uh, at all. So uh, you don't need those coding skills to participate in the hackathon. Absolutely. That's really yeah. interesting because uh, this event is happening on the 3rd of October. Yes. That is yes. next month. Yeah. And it's expected to be fun to have many youths <laughs> there and a lot of education happening and embracing of technology. Yeah. Is this the first time we're having this event happen at uh, Riara University? Excellent. Uh, thank you, Makali, uh, for that. I think uh, for us, yes, it's a first time. And it's not only uh, a digital hackathon for Riara, mm -hmm. but it's a global digital hackathon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's across the, the globe. globe. Okay? Yes. In Africa, we only have three representation. Uh, there's West Africa, there's Kenya, and Kenya is only Riara, Riara University, and Tanzania, a high school in Tanzania. So these, we are part of a global revolution trying to define uh, what uh, technology is infusing into, into education. So yes, it's a first one, yes. but we, we intend to keep doing do more, it yeah, annually. annually exactly and this is not limited only to students of riara university is it no it is not uh, in fact it's a countrywide conversation uh, we have participants who have registered even all the way from nigeria Beautiful. and from other countries because really it's about asking ourselves how will the universities of the future look like yeah. are we prepared for universities of the future Technology right now is everywhere. Uh, students can access content from Google, from any part of the world. Yeah. So what's the role of the universities in the digital space? And that's the conversation we'll be asking from the fundamentals of why, why a university, when you can access all the yeah. content yeah. through your mobile phone or tablet. Interesting, but I'm mm. looking at someone who is not... Um, in the city, probably yeah. not exposed to this kind of digital education, but um, probably in future, if they ever came across it, they would be interested. But what happens now to that kind of person? Are there ways to get to them? Because if it's education, I think it's meant for everyone, especially if you are in the bracket of youth. Yeah, uh, yes, we, we've embraced the spheres of the digital space, uh, okay? And uh, we will be real time on social media, particularly Facebook. Uh. Instagram, uh, where these youth mostly are. Yeah. So for those who are far and wide, they'll be able to access the conversations that are going around uh, the digital hackathon, mm. which is a 24 hours event. My goodness, so what, what topics are we looking at? What topics are we looking at? What topics are going to be discussed? Well, uh, it, first of all, there'll be a lot of fun. Uh, it is not just hacking and uh, creating solutions. Professor, when you say that, what <laughs> <is it? laughs> <laughs> there'll be loud music, there'll ah, be lights all over, there'll okay. be cheese tents in okay. the garden and a fun environment. Well, not the kind of fun that <laughs> maybe professors <laughs> are used to, but yeah. fun that students will be used to. There'll be competition, DJ competitions ah, and things ah. like those. And so we're asking every university that is participating to come with their own DJ. And then in between the activities, 
there'll be those DJing sessions in the garden and students just recharging and uh, reconnecting. So well, we are saying that first of all, there's no topic that is out of bounds. Okay. Because we really want to engage the youth to tell us how in their views, and it's not just the youth, but we have education professionals mm -hmm. and mentors, but specifically for the youth, yeah. how would a university that makes more sense to them look like? From the teaching approaches, mm -hmm. right now you go to any institution, most of them you have the student seated facing a lecturer who yes. is standing, and so the student is already told that is your space, sit down, listen to me, take notes, I'll ask you a few questions at the end of the semester, give back to me what I told you, I give you a grade and I say you're a bright student. But we're asking, is that all? Is that the future? Is that the future of mm. education? And we are convinced that it is not. So, wow. we'll so if be, that is not the typical setup, what yeah. is the future setup looking like for students it could in be, university? It could be anything like even sitting around um, a circle like this and mm. just having conversations with students. It could be a case where a student or students in a class are given a project based on their passions, their interests, and they're assessed based on their delivery of that project, yeah. as opposed to just sitting and writing exams. I'm sure since you finished your college, you have never been given a test by your employer and told to write down <laughs> 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 something that uh, you know. Yeah. It should be more about doing and becoming, right. not just receiving and memorizing. Cramming. It should, and cramming, mm. yes. should be more about not just doing also, yeah by helping students and young people to become the person they always wish to become. Absolutely. How to go about that mm -hmm. is what will be hacking on the third and exactly. fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, and maybe Charles, you can tell me this. Schools are slowly looking at technology, uh, not just as a place for studying, but uh, an opportunity to develop teaching methods. So how can we say digital education is transforming teaching methods? For sure, yeah. Uh, technology is really uh, looking into that space. And one of the issues that we are looking at, uh, w when you asked Prof, what are the thematic areas we are looking at? Yeah. One of them is uh, the pedagogy. What is that? Pedagogy is now a lecturer pre preparing for a class uh -huh. and to the actual teaching. Uh, do we, are we still uh, of the conventional of methods of teaching okay. at this digital space? Uh -huh. So we are asking these youth, what would, you, what would be your ideal uh, IT teaching setup? Uh, I'll give a case example. Okay. Uh, probably I'm studying a j journalism or mm -hmm. mass media communication as a student. And uh, I have a unit called blogging mm -hmm. or, or YouTubing. Yes. Uh, would we choose to do it real time and push uh, content there on the space and see how much viewership we can be able to generate? Then ask ourselves, then why are we not at one million? Uh -huh. Like Wamalambez, why are we not at one million? How can we convert the viewership to that level? Okay. And that goes back into looking at the content into which the content that has been packaged. How do we enhance it? How does the student understand much more uh, yeah. the industry so that it can be able to really produce for that? And because when you talk about technology, that puts into perspective the gadgets that are going to be involved. Because exactly. mm -hmm. it wouldn't be your Kawaida books, but <coughs> when you look at that, is it is it feasible for our universities to get that for their students? Well, yeah, I believe it is because really education in the digital space does not necessarily mean that you must have all the gadgets. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we've done a study even at Riara. Uh, every student has a smartphone. Well, almost every student has a smartphone. That smartphone is already a very powerful device for learning. Mm -hmm. And how can we, and it's been demonized. Right now you find a student on the phone in class yeah. and they are told off, switch off your phone, put it away. But that's the space that uh, young people are in. And so the question is, how can we convert these devices to be learning devices? Because that is the only way students are able to connect with the learning. Yeah. The traditional methods that we find uh, currently, you realize that you know, students are really disengaged from the learning. It's like to Makuja Shule, Fanya Mtiani, pass, <laughs> graduate, then mm. go start life. Mm. But 
that life has to begin in the university for you to be engaged and to learn because not because there is a certificate at the end of the day mm -hmm. but because your that learning is connected to your interests to your passions to your talents and our responsibility is to activate you in the university empower you and unlock that potential is like unleash you yeah. and your potential but we can't do that using the traditional methods we are doing right now absolutely yeah. and prof has just mentioned how every student almost every student yes. has a phone and that brings me to a, con a smartphone yes. brings me to a conversation we had last week where yes. we had students in primary school um going on social media and doing yeah, very yeah, ugly yes, videos. Yeah, yeah. But then that begs the question, yeah. oh, with all these gadgets, what yeah. else are we doing when we are empowering them? Yeah. Are we also giving them guidelines on how to properly use these tools that are at their disposal? I think before even uh, Charles speaks, <coughs> let me speak to the issue of parenting. Okay. Because that is the biggest issue. And I hope one day we can have a much longer conversation <laughs> about parenting. Yeah. From my experience, uh, having been the, in the university sector for many years, you find that in most cases, first of all, the cases that go to disciplinary hearings and proceedings mm -hmm. in the university, majority of them can be traced to home and issues of parenting and mentorship. I think as parents, and I have kids uh, uh, within that age, my, my four-year-old daughter is able to pick my phone. She knows my password. She's able to go to YouTube and look for whatever video she wants yeah. on YouTube. She's only four years. So how will that child be by the time they're getting to 15 years, yeah. 17 years? It can be scary. But the parent has to come in from that early age to guide the, the, the child on the good and bad use of technology, the pitfalls in technology, that not everybody online is a good friend of yours. Yeah. Not everybody has good intentions, ability to filter what they view and how they internalize what to filter out and that kind of thing. So I think we cannot disassociate the role of parenting from this digital education space. Uh, and, and that's a whole conversation that we need to have. I think we need to have you back for, for that <laughs> conversation. Very <laughs> passionate about it. Yeah. Would you yeah. want to jump in on that? No, I, th I think Prof. has, <laughs> has he's, he's taken care exactly of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with this particular event that is happening, are we yes. going to be, what, what, is the, what is the goal after you've gotten all these students, mm. 24 hours, fun field education and it's a hackathon that means it's a marathon that means it's a competition <laughs> yes. of some sort yes. uh, what are the details around that uh, we've put in uh, as you said a 24-hour engagement yes. in between it has a break and uh, what you're looking for we've called in uh, all students within the university spaces who think, who think they would have a solution on how better we could uh, channel the conversation around universities and, edu and education. Okay. We've not only limited it to uh, to universities, also broadened it up to some of these uh, organizations that focus on uh, providing solution. A good example would be a space like the High Hub or the, mm. the Nile Lab, and those are the spaces that we are looking at contribution. So once you come in, uh, you log, you, you register on a portal online. If you go to our university website and our social media pages, I'll direct you to the sign up link. Once you sign up, you come on board on the third, uh, you find mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've collected uh, industry sort of tried and tested people who can guide uh, startups into viable uh, business ideas and what have you. So you, you get the mentors, you go through the preparation, uh, you, the, you have the fun side of it, the event. Then later on the following day, uh, we do the judging and we'll be able to come up with one single winner that we feel uh, the idea was much strong. Uh, the beauty is that, as I've said earlier, it's a global event, uh, okay? Uh, it comes from a university in Finland called the Alto University, uh, okay? And they're looking at uh, prize money for winner. And, uh, they're looking up to almost uh, 5,000 euros, which is almost half a million and above yeah. for, for the winner. So, so those who think they would have strong ideas that challenge 
uh, the education space, uh, we welcome everyone to sign up for this. That is so beautiful yeah. because you're not just sharing an idea, you might just change a whole generation exactly. with that. Exactly. And, yeah. and how many students <coughs> are we looking at? Or people who will participate in that? Well, the core team, <coughs> sorry, the core team is about 100 hackers, uh, mm -hmm. so to say, both from Riara and other institutions. We are also open to members of the public, the youth, uh, who are able to engage on social media and make their contributions through social media. The, the whole event is part of what is called the European Union Digital Education Action Plan. Because these conversations are not just locally. They are conversations that universities across the world are asking themselves. Are we going to run out of business, if I may use that word? because of uh, using traditional methods of uh, teaching all along. So we are looking to create a model that can be used and replicated in universities across the world, okay. not just in Kenya, not just in Africa. So what will come out of the Riara Hackathon will be combined with what will come from the hackathons from all countries of the world and then we'll create a model that all of us can use and it will be publicly available for you know other universities to use so it's the whole range from teaching approaches learning spaces how do we design our classes mm. how do we get students more engaged what assessment methods work instead of just the traditional written exams you know all these are questions what's the best effective way of using technology for learning but i think we need to be also careful not to overrate technology i believe and <coughs> technology, <coughs> sorry, is my background. But I believe that as human beings, the way we are wired, yeah. even if there's technology, there's still room for face-to-face -face human gotcha. interactions, yeah. uh, mentor, apprentice yeah. kind of um, you know, relationships. Because yes, you can learn online, but when you go to a company, you'll be dealing with physical people. Yeah. So how do we interface the technology with the face-to-face? -face? Uh, and all these are conversations that uh, we'll be looking to have. So it's open to all members of the public to engage with us mm -hmm. the whole day, the whole night, until the following morning. We'll be live 24 hours. Great. Yeah. And you know, if you have any questions about the Riara Hackathon, you just go on and text us on 22349. That is our SMS line. And also talk to us on social media. On uh, Facebook, it's Switch TV Kenya. On IG, is Switch TV KE. And on Facebook, I see Irene Candy saying uh, they are doing a great job. So kudos to you guys. Most students complain what's being taught in class and what they actually find out when they get out of school. Those are two different things. And that is what the space you're in right now, trying to change that. Exactly. And, and it's very, very interesting. But when you look at what the universities will have to incur in terms of cost, exactly. so cost cutting, will, will that be applicable? Or are they going to be cutting costs? Because you also mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> you also mentioned <coughs> that uh, we will not lose the human contact as well. So we'll still yeah, need yeah. them in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, quality, first of all, is expensive. Very um, expensive. expensive. And for us to do a good job, we have to be prepared to invest. Uh, not just on the university side, but also on the learner side. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes you also find the learners ask too much of the institution, yet it is them being empowered. So it's a two-way thing. Yeah. So costs will be there, but I believe you may find that at the end of the day, universities may end up saving. Yeah. Because a learning space could be just a mat, mm -hmm. and you all sit around the mat yeah. and have yeah. conversations. Exactly. Yeah. Put exactly. away the books. Exactly. Just have a conversation on a certain topic. Exactly. You may find that you may get a whole lot out of that as opposed to just sitting in class, you know, listen, listening to somebody who prepared those notes 10, 15 years ago and they've mm -hmm. never upgraded their notes. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, reorganization mm -hmm. does not necessarily mean that it will be expensive mm -hmm. for the institutions. Exactly. The whole perspective and from an engineering perspective because that's my background as, uh, as I said first look at the solution what works if you're constructing a bridge you don't start looking at the costs first yeah look at what is the best bridge we can put here okay. that will save lives and ease communication okay. and flow of people okay. then 
now you go to the costs. Exactly. But if we put costs first, then we won't be able to move. We won't be able we'll to be create. scared. Yeah. Exactly. I see you're raring to yeah. go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to chip into that. Yes. Uh, as <coughs> Prof have said, yes, we might not realistically look at cost saving as one uh, an item. And uh, this is a question that us as, in, as Riara University have been asking ourselves for the longest time ever. That yes, we pride in having a motto of nurturing innovators. Mm -hmm. But on establishment, what were, what, what were the motives? What were we thinking? Okay. Uh, yes. If you come to the university right now, a student could plug in. You could go to the grass, find a socket, uh, switch, put in, plug in your device there, and start uh, your class from there. Or do your assignment from the grass, enjoy the sun, enjoy the, fr the free uh, air that, that, that you're breathing, and go and deliver. So the question is, um, we've done that, but yes, we're asking ourselves, would, would this is the best solution, or there is more contribution from these students that we are targeting into to become part of the university? Absolutely. Yeah. And we're coming back, but this conversation is not over, but it's in a very short commercial break. Remember, you can SMS us on 2239, text us on Facebook and on Instagram. Talk to us and we'll definitely get you a question or get you into the Riara Hackathon that is happening on the 3rd of October. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Full Circle with Joyce and I am Mwikali Mary and we are talking about the youth in digital education with me, uh, two gentlemen from Riera University because there's going to be a hackathon happening in uh, in October, the 3rd of October this year and it's, it's a huge deal because it's going to be happening globally and we're having people even from Nigeria join in in this amazing 24 our experience and looking at our sms line i see um hmm, you don't give us your name but he's saying hi Mikali, kindly ask the lecturer if he thinks students who take online courses generally perform better da -da -dan, da -da -dan. <laughs> yes can i <laughs> yes you want to jump respond that? yes um i think the whole idea about learning is, mm -hmm. is so individualized that uh, it is difficult to say generally that they perform better or not better. Uh, what I can say is that, uh, and as I said earlier, uh, we cannot re re rely 100% on technology, basically. Yeah. We strongly believe that uh, this, there's a, a space for face-to-face -face learning. But that face-to-face -face has to be augmented with technology. But at the end of the day, it is the learner who is on the driving seat. Mm -hmm. And the learner needs to be on the driving seat of their learning. You can have a student who is online, but they have the discipline, the commitment, the interest, the passion, the engagement to, 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 to really excel in their studies. And they will do well. You can have a student who is face to face and they're in class, their mind is away, they've just packed yeah. their body in class. So it's a two-way thing. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's both the institutions first to ensure that the learning approaches engage the student, yeah. but also now the student has to play their part so in okay. terms of engaging with the learning. All right. Yeah. And someone else here who's not also left their name says, that's my VC right there. I really respect <laughs> that man. Thank and you. <laughs> Charles, I'm going to pose this to you. Uh, talk about digital education for youth uh, with disabilities and inclusivity. Also, as you talk about providing solutions, tell us about the challenges of making the youth digitally savvy. Maybe you can split that into two. Okay, uh, I'll tackle the first one, yes. uh, the PW, people with uh, dis disabilities. disabilities, okay? And uh, I think initially, and this is a regulator point of view, uh, okay. you know, we are highly regulated by the Commission for University Education. And uh, yes, as a, before we established, we put into consideration uh, the PWD, the people with disabilities, and uh, you find RAMs and all this. Yeah. But now come to the digital space. We are, I would say that uh, uh, from my view, I think we are a bit challenged we need to look at that as a solution, okay? How do we then uh, plug in these people with disability? The other day I was listening to a conversation on mm -hmm. M-Pesa mm -hmm. and people with disabilities, particularly the, the, the blind, and uh, there is a bot, you know, bot is a, is a, is a short form, is, is a, an example of a robot. Okay. And the bot will do a voiceover 
to the person who is not able to see, and that will prompt uh, the other end so that I can be able to transact. Mm -hmm. So that's still an area that is being developed. And probably uh, through this hackathon, maybe we'd find a solution into that. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe the prof can get yes. into the second bit of the question. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> also as you talk about providing solutions, uh, tell us about the challenges of making the youth digitally savvy. Okay. Uh, before I tackle that, let me just add that, yes, even in this hackathon, uh, part of the mentors we have, because we'll have both mentors and judges, the mentors are people who will walk the hackers through forming the ideas and shaping them and putting them together. Yeah. We have uh, special needs experts. And special needs, the moment we think about special needs, sometimes we think uh, just about the normal physical disabilities. Yeah. But we have other psychological di yeah. disabilities, like ADHD, the yeah. students who are hyperactive. Yeah. It's a condition and yeah. we need to provide for them. Instead yes. of telling them, shut down, keep quiet, yeah. sit in class, yeah. they have a condition, how do we provide for those? So we have a special needs expert. But coming to the question you asked, um, I think that is part of what we want to understand uh, through this hackathon. How do we facilitate the youth to be able to uh, operate and learn within the digital space? Mm. We appreciate not everybody can afford the same type of devices like everybody else. Yeah. Connectivity is an issue, even at uh, Riara, and I'm glad that uh, some students are watching. They know they're <laughs> always asking for more Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, so all these are demands that uh, will continue to be there, and we need to provide for them. So there's a training part but there are also regulatory issues, but also we look for a way of facilitating them. Uh, for example, at Riara, we've partnered with a company called Cool for School, who are able to give students uh, laptops or mobile devices, and then you pay during your entire study time. Okay. Ah. So if you get it in first year, you have three or four years to, to pay for your laptop. Okay. So that makes it very, very easy for a student to be able to take up devices. Mm. So institutions have to facilitate that mm. and combine that with uh, training and also the other um, facilities, especially Wi-Fi. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We can mm. never <laughs> feed enough Wi-Fi <laughs> to the students. That is one uh, request that yes. will not stop anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> exactly, and we'll continue to enhance that. Okay. Yes. I think another question here on our SMS line, uh, using digital technology is great, but what about areas in Kenya where technology has not reached or places which are not developed? Uh, I think uh, uh, first let me just go to statistics. Okay. And, and uh, uh, in Kenya I think we are highly privileged as far as internet connectivity is concerned. And I think we are the leading, if I'm not wrong, the leading country in Africa on that, on that space. So yes, I, would, I, would, uh, I agree that there are spaces that they've not been uh, 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 sort of uh, reached out as far as this uh, connectivity is concerned. Yeah. But look, uh, I think uh, the much we can reach and, and convert, the better. And maybe there will be the people to provide solution and extend. Ambassadors for uh, those other places. Ex exactly. We're yeah. hopeful. Yeah. We're, We're hopeful. hopeful yeah. Any iconic faces that we are looking out for, especially people in the digital space and digital education that will be part of this event, uh, the hackathon? Well, we, we've invited a lot of industry stakeholders, uh, CEOs of companies who will be coming, other icons like in Sam Gishuru and uh, other well-known uh, digital enthusiasts. Uh, we'll have some bloggers, we'll have uh, lecturers mm -hmm. also who are very passionate about this. Of course, our founders, uh, Daniel and Eda Gashukia, who have been in this space for the last 45 years. Uh, they're so excited about this and seeing the university transform in their lifetime into a fully digital institution. So I, I don't want to let out uh, mm. too many <laughs> names. Uh, <laughs> let, let, let the hackers come and experience. Yeah. And uh, those who are not able to join, as I said, can join the conversations online. And uh, let's really ask ourselves these questions because we don't want to to live a lie for too long. Mm. Okay. What I mean by living a lie, yes. Doing the same things and expecting and different, different results. results. Yeah. Um, we really have to transform uh, how we do university education. Exactly. And I hope that even the government will be able to accept that even from a regulatory perspective, mm -hmm. you know, things have changed. That's you true. do not expect uh, just 
the same things we were expecting when uh, some of us were in school. And that's the, the sad bit where you want everything to remain as it was. Exactly. Yes. Well, the world is not waiting yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, the world right, is yeah. moving. Oh, yeah. uh, does true. it come to the end of this conversation? Just to add on to this, yes. Mukali, and yes. uh, besides even the people that we've invited in the industry, yeah. we've also partnered with a lot of companies to support in this undertaking because for sure it's, it needs a budget. Yeah. Uh, a good example is people like Tuskies. Tuskies mm. are provided food for 200 people okay. for free. Okay, there are people like Cool for School who has provided laptops to people who are going to win some of these challenges. Uh? Okay. And also, as a, pan, as a fun side of it, uh, the, 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 the youth will be provided free ice cream. Oh, that is so <laughs> Everyone cool. Everyone who attends, uh, they'll be... <laughs> Where will it be, the dates, the timings again, as yeah. we come to the end of this yeah. before we yeah. uh, take a very uh, short break? Okay. Riara University, <coughs> Bagadi Way, you will not find us anywhere else. We operate only from Bagadi Way. Yes. Um, third and fourth of October, so starting on the morning of third, all the way throughout the night of the third, and then judging will be in the morning of the fourth, and then the awards again on the fourth. So it will be live on all our social media pages, and uh, yeah, we look forward to a lot of fun, food, and uh, Innovation. Music. And, and music. And yes. <laughs> There'll be lots of music, lots okay. of dancing. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. And, nice. and, and so those who are interested to sign up can yes. visit our social media platforms. Okay. There's a link that will take you to the what sign is up that portal. Page, social media www.facebook forward slash Riara University. All right. You'll get us. So, yeah, you'll be directed from that point or our, even the university website. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and do just that if you're interested in being part of the event. And. Uh, you know what, it's the first time it's happening here, so why not be part of that amazing revolution? And we're going to be back in the second hour talking about your weaknesses and how to turn them into a strength and also looking at what exactly are the Coco Networks. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Joyce.